All right. So uh, in the last session, we talked about how to implement a custom middleware function, right? So just to revise, middleware func is a type which is a function. So underneath it is a function which accepts a handler func as an argument, returns a handler func. Handler func is also another type which is a function and uh, it accepts a context and returns an error. All right. Now, echo framework also comes with some common middleware. Okay. So there are some common use cases of middleware among uh, in, in web development and echo framework provides some of them right off the shelf, ready to use for developers. Of course, for many cases, people, developers would still want to implement a custom middleware like this. Let me just type custom here because it's a custom middleware. But there are some cases where you would want to just use the middleware provided by the framework itself. And we are going to see some examples of that today. But before we get to that, let's expand this custom middleware a little bit. So in the last session, I talked about uh, this method called pre. Okay, so pre is the method uh, as it says that it adds a middleware to the chain which is run before the router. So if you want to do something that gets executed before any of these routes have a chance to run, then you would want to do that using the pre function. Okay. And we'll see one example of that. But right now, just for the sake of a custom example, I'm going to show you something. So let me do something. I'm going to change the URI of the request being sent to us to something else. Okay, so let me let me show an example. So I have a context object here, right, as part of this function. What I'm going to do is I'm going to call its request method. So I have a bunch of things from request to be fetched, like body and form and everything. Among that, I, I'm interested in URL. A URL is of a type uh, URL. So it's coming from the Golang URL package. Okay, and I'm going to access the path of it. I'm going to set it to, let's say, Kronal. Okay, so what it's supposed to be doing is no matter what endpoint I request, it's going to change the request before any of these writers have a chance to run. It's going to change the URI to slash Kronal, and when the the router gets to check if it has an endpoint slash chronal and it won't be able to find anything and it will return an error all right so let, let's see that in practice but just so that you can see some logs i'm going to print some of them here okay so i have i'm, I'm printing request here all right and i'm going to call this get products method and in fact i'm going to call the other methods too but let me just put something here in get products as well. Okay, the same thing. Okay, and just for this is coming from get product. Okay, let me save this. Let me save this. And when I go back to Insomnia, where while accessing products, I was getting a list of products. Uh, when I access it now, I still get it. I think uh, in just a minute. Let me check. I think I might be missing something here. So I'm calling. I think I don't know what is. Okay, so this is coming from get product. And uh, I am calling server message middleware. So it is all fine. Did I save it? Let me just run this again. Yeah. So that's what I was expected, expecting to show up. I don't know why it was not showing up. So if you can see that this particular log is coming from inside middleware. So right after inside middleware, I'm able to see this log and this is from 
this function itself so you can see that the URI URL has been changed okay and that is why uh, this method doesn't even get printed that is because it doesn't even get to that point so right after the middleware has run which runs before the route gets activated the route then goes and finds out if there's any endpoint by slash kernel and it doesn't find anything and it just uh, returns an exception okay but if I were to comment this out so I don't have a middleware function getting invoked before the router and when I access this page now I can see the list of products now and you can see that this log is coming from get products and that was my clue previously where I was able to find out that I probably need to restart the server okay so this is an example of the pre method something that you might want to use if you have a need to run something that needs to run before the router gets activated and I'm going to show you an example of another example of that but this time using uh, the middleware uh, package inside echo itself so echo has uh, two kind of middlewares okay so when you do middleware dot it's gonna the intelligence will show you some of them I'm going with the v4 here because I'm using echo v4 okay so it's got two of them so I'm just going to press enter okay and I'm going to thing what is it remove trailing uh, I don't know I think uh, I'll find out yeah remove trailing slash so remove trailing slash is a function okay but it returns a middleware function and that is why I have to call it as a function as opposed to what I was doing before with server message server message itself is a middleware function okay so I did not have to call it I just had to put the name here but a remote trailing slash is actually not a middleware function but it returns a middleware function and that is why I have to call it and I'm going to save it now and let me tell you what it does okay so uh, I'm going to save this now and uh, let me show you something here so now when I get a list of products I get the list when I add an additional slash here I still get the products and that's because I have added this remote trailing slash in my code right now okay uh, but if I remove this okay if I run this now I don't get it I don't get the list of products and that's because the additional slash is not acceptable to the framework it's expecting exactly slash products and nothing more of course you can give something like this and it will give you the TV which is the second ID second product but it won't work on this and that is why sometimes uh, you know you're not you can't expect the client to be always correct and you can sort of understand what they want to access but because of that you, you would want to consider removing you know additional slash from the argument and that's what this middleware was doing here let me save it back okay and uh, what happened this time use middleware okay so I think it's defaulting to a different middleware and let me just add v4 here yeah, it does that sometimes and now it's running fine when I come back here I get a list of products again all right so that's uh, one example of uh, the middleware functions that are available as part of uh, the echo function so this middleware is a package in the echo framework itself okay and it's got a bunch of middleware functions so I'm gonna just show some of them to you in the uh, drop down list that just shows up as part of auto completion so let me again show you so when I do middleware you can see that there's a bunch of them so you can add a trailing slash as well sometimes if it is missing there's one for basic authentication uh, there's one for body dump body limit uh, let me do an example of body limit here 
So body limit again is a, uh, is a function, okay? And uh, uh, all I have to do is I have to pass it the argument and that argument is the size of the post body that I'm expecting, the maximum size of it. Uh, the reason why you might you would want to consider this is because maybe your endpoint is public or maybe your endpoint is not public, that doesn't matter. But somebody who is who, who has some uh, ill intention onto your post endpoint, they are going to send very large chunk of post endpoint with some valid data as well. But your server is going to then spend time unnecessarily, you know, parsing that huge chunk of body, which is actually sort of computation heavy. Uh, not so much, but a little bit. So that is why then it results in sluggish performance on a server and uh, you, you, you know, mix it up with uh, DDoS attacks, rate limiting attacks, and then you got a server that's got serious problems. and. That's why these are some of the things that you might want to consider. So usually you would want to put something like 4M. M stands for megabytes or 2M. You know, 2M or 1M is even 1M is nice. You have to decide what is going to be like the maximum size of your payload. But just for the sake of a demonstration, I'm going to go with one case, one kilobyte. Okay. And uh, let me show you an example of this now. So I have uh, this post payload, right? So I'm going to actually add a product to the list here right now, okay? So the product has been added and when I do the get, I get it added to the list. But uh, let me do something else. Let me add another product called, let's say, smartwatch, okay? And not only that, I'm also going to add some dummy data which is very large in size. So from over the internet, I have some dummy data that I've picked up. And I'm going to just paste it here, just like this, okay? And I'm going to send it now. And you can see that it returns 413, request entity to large, and the message as well. So it handled it for me automatically, right? So that's, that's a nice thing to have. So we've seen two examples of middleware, right? This middleware will also come in handy when you want to uh, implement some common authentication, let's say basic authentication or JWT, JWT token-based authentication. And uh, there are many use cases and it's out of scope for this session, but the idea was now you know how to implement the middleware function, okay? So having said that, now we'll cover some other topics. Uh, let me know how you, uh, if you have any questions around this middleware function and I'll see you in the next session.